guys, Roger again with Burgess. Today's quick video will give you a strong foundation in exhaust systems. Now, chapter 15 of the IRC deals with exhaust systems in general. Um, there is a strong emphasis in there on dryer vents, and after today's video, you'll know some big uh, trip falls and changes that have happened in the last couple of code cycles. But generally speaking, the, uh, the chapter 15 exhaust systems deals with bathroom ventilation, um, ventilation in the kitchen, uh, cooking areas, a whole house ventilation, as well as clothes dryers. Uh, it is very important to stay up with codes so that when things happen, like in the 2018, you know that uh, these can become problematic. This is a very popular device that has made its way to the system ever since we started having to run exhaust to the exterior. Remember that it cannot be exhausted to crawl spaces, attics, just laid in the, uh, uh, the soffit space, etc. Um, however, these can be a trip fall. This particular one no longer qualifies under the 2018 IRC. So we're going to show you that and uh, a little bit more. Okay, so I, I touched on one of the changes in the 2018, and that had to do with the, uh, the exhaust termination. But I wanted to come to the other end, the, uh, the actual connection end, to talk about another um, change in the IRC. This is something that we rarely ever see, but um, know that it could be called by a municipality if they, if they so desired. Really what code calls for is the, uh, the opening for the dryer exhaust to be capped and labeled for future use. So a uh, quick side note there to be aware of, um, but an 18 change talks about deformity. So I think that uh, a lot of ducts were getting crammed into two before cavities and these four inch ducts were getting compressed, um, deformed out of round, out of shape. And so the 2018 addressed that and you can no longer deform the shape. So with a round duct, really have no other option on a four inch round now, except to go to a two by six wall. So keep that in mind. Um, also, we'll touch on this while we're here, your math for length reductions. You know, well, I'll tell you about the, the overall length in a minute, but just keep in mind that you gotta subtract five feet from that overall length for every 90 degree bend, elbow, and two and a half feet reduction for every 45 degree bend. So keep those qualifiers in mind when you're doing the math and make sure that your length is going to fall uh, the correct amount, which we'll touch on here in a minute. Um, briefly talking about laps, we'll get into sealing seams and connections and so forth, but always make sure that you are lapping any joints in the direction of airflow. Think shingle fashion, just like watershed, air the same way. So make sure the up stream piece goes inside the downstream piece. Make sure we're lapping those correctly, fastening and, and sealing. Um, I will talk about the, the distance here in just a minute as far as the termination from openings, but one thing that kind of overlaps between the general requirements of chapter 15 and of chapter 16, because 16, and I, I encourage you to watch the video on that too on chapter 16, high points, is the exhaust termination needs to be at least 10 feet from ventilation intake openings. So any mechanical ventilation intake that you've got on the exterior of the house, any exhaust, dry or otherwise, needs to be at least 10 feet away from that unless it is three feet above. That's what the code says. So it can be within three feet if it's directly above the intake. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, that's, we've got to make sure we're 10 feet away from that air intake. Um, other than that, remember that your, your exhausts have to have backdraft dampers, um, screens for any other kind of exhaust, no screens for dryer ducts, dryer exhaust terminations, um, but we'll get into that next. Okay, as we continue in chapter 15 for exhaust systems, let's start, and look at the, start by looking at the generalities, and then we'll drill down into uh, dryer exhaust here in a minute. So M1504 establishes the baseline for exhaust systems specifically regarding uh, ducts and the placement of the openings. So here are the high points. Remember that it can't be uh, three feet, within three feet of a property line, within three feet of another 
uh, openings, either operable or non-operable. Now, here's a neat change in the 2018. The 2018 deleted the word non-operable. So realize the, uh, the, the problem with uh, declaring that the exhaust opening can't be next to a non-operable uh, opening or, uh, excuse me, window or door. So 2018 kind of uh, clarified that. Can't dump it onto a walkway. And generally speaking, exhaust openings have to be covered with a screen. The screen opening size anywhere between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch. So that kind of lays the, the groundwork for openings. The other thing that Chapter 15 does with exhaust systems is address the length. And a big change happened in the 2015 IRC by including a prescriptive table for duct length. Um, remember, we're talking about ventilation for cooking appliances, bathroom exhaust, whole house ventilation, etc. So this table can be very problematic if you're not careful. For example, some of the things that are, are referenced in the table, a, uh, a four inch um, smooth metal duct uh, running a, off of an 80 CFM fan can have a maximum length of 31 feet. A four inch flex duct running off the same 80 CFM fan can only extend four feet. That's a big challenge. Uh, one more example, a six inch uh, duct um, running off a 200 CFM fan. That six inch flex can only span 18 feet. All right, now there are a couple of exceptions under that table using a flow, flow gr grid, flow hood for verification, uh, manufacturer specs, etc. But watch that table that's in that 1504 section and uh, be very careful. Also, stay away from adding any elbows. 90 degree elbows automatically deduct 15 feet from the allowable length. So that's a huge penalty uh, if you throw a 90 degree elbow in there. So be careful with that. I'm also going to include a link to a, a document, a summary document of this information that I'm giving today. So watch for that. There are a lot of numbers in this, uh, in this video. So I wanted to consolidate that and give you a good point of reference. So watch for that. Now that was 1504. M1502 deals specifically with uh, uh, clothes dryer exhaust. And what I was talking about earlier were uh, the terminations to the outside of the house and the potential problem with this one. Make sure that you're equipping your team for success because if the wrong thing is grabbed or shipped or specced, you've got a problem. So the 2018 said the exhaust termination must have a a net opening of 12 and a half square inches. This one would be fine because it is three by five, so we got 15 except for the screen. Dryer vents, unlike the general requirements in 1504, they cannot have lint catchers, cannot have anything that's going to impede or catch lint and cause a problem. So we'd have to get rid of the, the screen there. This particular device, however, is two inches by five inches of net free area there, net opening, that's 10. That does not satisfy the 2018 IRC. So you really got to be careful with what you grab. There are certainly models of this that satisfy the new 2018 requirement. Just make sure you're watching that, that very carefully. One other thing to note is the, um, the 2012 increased our dryer duct length from 25 max to 35 max, but that's all we could do. The 2015 added the allowance for booster fans. So you can exceed the length of 35 feet by adding a booster fan and following the manufacturer's specifications. Another thing that happened in the 2015 is that the requirement for a label next to the dryer connection was removed. So that was put on there um, to establish and talk to the consumer about the length of the dryer exhaust. That requirement got um, dismissed and removed in the 2015 unless you exceed 35 feet. If the dryer duct length is greater than 35 feet, the label is required. Uh, apart from that, just remember that uh, whatever methodology you're using, whether it's a flex or rigid, etc., and especially important when it comes to, uh, to crimped connections and smooth connections, etc., but the code is very clear about the way connections are 
um, are handled. You must use mechanical fasteners. So the code calls out specifically three screws or similar, i.e. rivets, there's a reference and you'll see it in the document, um, that have to be attached and evenly spaced. The kicker there is they can protrude no more than one eighth inch into the interior. Again, we don't want to catch lint on this thing and cause an obstruction, so be very careful. But watch the mechanical fasteners. They do have to be uh, included. Uh, also, all joints and seams, no matter the direction, all have to be sealed. And they have to be sealed with tape or mastic. The code is very clear about that, and not just any tape or mastic. Make sure that it is labeled um, with the, the UL listing of 181BFX for tape, which means not this, this does not qualify, or 181BM uh, for mastic. Now all the mastic will, will be labeled. You've got to find the fine print and make sure you're, you're following the, the instructions there and the code. Again, watch for the link, and we'll have all this math and numbers and details referenced in that link in that document for your view. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to find this useful and we'll keep the information coming.